Hey everyone, how is it going? This is Lawrence Henderson again with another humble, open and transparent conversation. And y'all, I got some amazing guests with me today. Some amazing educators, branding folks, and I got me y'all, I got an actress, leader, thought leader at the age of 13. Uh, but we're, we're gonna get into all that a little bit. Lisa, Emily, what is going on? Thank you for having us, Lawrence. No, my pleasure, my absolute pleasure. And so, uh, as you all know, uh, these conversations are going to be open. It's about thought leaders coming in, just talking about the world from where they are um, and how they're making an impact to their communities. And so, Lisa, just describe, I want everybody to know where you are in the world. So, Lisa, where are you at? Thank you, Lawrence. Um, I'm Lisa Caprelli, and I currently am based in Southern California. I live in Huntington Beach. I have lived here for 20 years, originally born and raised in Texas. And we have 13 year old Emily Isabel. Emily, share about yourself in a little bit for her, his audience. Yeah, hi, so my name is Emily. I'm 13, uh, I live in Brooklyn, New York. I'm a singer, dancer, and professional actor and voiceover artist. And we're so excited to share with you how we started connecting together, especially since the pandemic. Um, I'm the author and creator of the Unicorn Jazz Book Series. And um, this book, fast forward to the thing I do, is a book, it's a song, and it's also a children's TV show now on Amazon and more platforms we are uh, going after to connect families and kids sharing happiness. Emily is one of many of the kid talents, actors, singers that I'm so privileged to have worked with since the pandemic. And the thing I do, the show and, and the book and the song is about celebrating all the talents and interests that each of us have um, and, and doing them. And Emily's thing that she does, as she says, she acts, sings, um, dances, so many things. Emily, let's, let's showcase you because not, not every day do we have a 13 year old. I know I, I do many podcasts. I've been the, on Lawrence's side, um, interviewed, uh, been the host. So let's start with you for people listening, just someone as young as Emily, tell the audience your backstory and how you got interested in acting and singing your thing and, and your experience with Broadway. Yeah, so um, I first started doing acting and theater around the age of seven. Uh, what inspired me to start theater was on my seventh birthday, my mom took me to see Matilda on Broadway. And so when I saw it, I'm like, oh, I want to do that. I want to be on that stage. I want to dance on a stage. So that's really what inspired me to do theater. And then acting just kind of came along and dancing just came along after that. I originally started doing voiceovers and um, I was in the Santa Music National Tour as Brigida in the 2018 to 2019 run. So that was a lot of fun. We went to 91 cities, 32 states, and Canada. So we kind of just went around everywhere performing uh, a show every day. Sometimes we would have two shows a day. So that was a lot of fun. And then now that I'm doing more voiceover work, I'm starting to focus a lot more on that. And I'm currently the voice of a character on a new animated series coming out this fall. That is amazing. That's absolutely amazing. So kudos to you. I you you've done more but at the age of 13 than I did probably the first 25 years of my life. So congratulations. Yes, amazing. <laughs> yeah. So when you think about Lisa, where you are today, I know you have that branding, that marketing leader background. What made you point yourself in the direction of creating opportunities and spaces for kindness, connecting with others? Yes. You know, it's it's been really decades of, of coming into who I am, as many people can relate to. Sometimes when you're young, as, as young as Emily or younger, we're obviously we're in grade school, we're, we're being taught education and, and you know, what are you gonna do when you grow up? What's your career gonna be? I mean, that's something that's pressing for us since the day you know, we start our school, really. And for me, going back into my childhood, um, I wish I could have had books and messages that, that we put out um, as a community, as I work with kid talent like Emily, asking her questions like, what are they teaching you in school? What are they not teaching you? Where, where, how are you inspired by your family? Like her mom, Victoria, is a big 
motivation behind Emily and pushes her. And we all need someone who believes in us. And maybe it's a teacher, maybe it's a parent. As I and as I often say to children, hey, maybe you believe in someone. We need that. So, um, um, as you said earlier, I have a 27 plus year uh, background in marketing and branding businesses to success. I'm so grateful I've got to work with over 150 CEOs and brands by now. And uh, about in 2018, uh, I I published this book, uh, Skip a Step: Imparting Wisdom for Young Entrepreneur Minds, and it comes with a workbook journal. And Skip a Step is about uh, where I interview 13 different leaders and entrepreneurs about what makes for happiness, what makes for meaning, what would they tell their younger self? Hence, what would you do to skip steps if you could at a younger age? And because by this time I learned trials and tribulations, things that I thought, well, that could have been a shortcut if someone would have told me this early on, you know. So um, after uh, creating Skip a Step and getting this book live, it was really a calling that I had to do what I love now. And, and so I stopped helping other businesses. I learned a lot and would not trade that for the world. And I created Unicorn Jazz uh, that was going to be more than a children's brand series. I knew from the beginning the vision I had was going to be it encompassing different things, you know, incorporating music, um, songs that I, I immediately did that with the first book with the friendship song. Today, present day, I have uh, nine songs out on a children's album called Unicorn Jazz, the thing I do. So I, I think about making branding consistent. And since the pandemic and connecting with family and kids like Emily Isabel, uh, who actually went on me on, on virtual Zoom tours uh, d doing author visits, and she read many of the books of the Unicorn Jazz. She's actually a professional singer, so guess who I want to sing? Emily. So she's um, uh, record. I flew to New York um, in May, got to meet her and her family finally, which was so huge to me to actually meet all the people that, that help you on this path. And she... Um, uh, recorded in her voice three songs a haiku song baby i love you and rainbow so emily i'm gonna put you on the spot uh sing a little bit of the haiku song yeah so the haiku song was actually more of a rap song to teach kids about what a haiku is so the beginning of it kind of went like this haiku what's a haiku five seven five say what haiku what's a haiku five seven five that's right, it's a poem that began in Japan. Now it's used on every single land. It's simple, only three short lines. Here's some rules to keep in mind. Line one has five syllables. Line two has seven syllables. Line three has five syllables. And that's all it has to be. Yay, isn't it great? I love that, I Akutawa. love that. So, yeah, so, so we, my, my, my educator fun. wife would love that, yeah. Oh my gosh, we have to connect with you. We have so many yeah. free resources for teachers, educators. Yeah. So I have a book called Ocean Animals, and each book is about, you know, characters, um, unicorn jazz style, as my illustrator Davey would draw, about different ocean animals. And I wanted them to come out in the form of a riddle and a haiku. And early on, everyone was like, what's a haiku? So that we solved that problem right Emily yeah <laughs> and we'll share a video of her, of her singing it it's so fun and it's been so fun living in purpose and now I get to do what I love I get to use all the creative uh, skill sets that God has blessed me with through my lifetime my favorite one has been writing you know that's why I love being an author um, I often say my only voice was on paper growing up I grew up really shy and introverted different than Emily, where she is more extroverted and she's not shy when I see things of her or singing or acting. I mean, it lends itself to the experience and talent. And that's really, you know, what we can talk about as well. Yeah, no. And, and I think I think that leans to, you know, again, your reason of, of going down this route of purposeful work to support um, these young entrepreneurs, these young creatives yes. um, come into their power. And when you think about the things that you had to overcome and you've had to walk through and acknowledge in your life, how have have those things shaped who you are today? Oh, it's it's been enormous. I mean, I, I've taken in account all the 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 strengths and skill sets and education that I was able to to um, learn in my lifetime so far, and always a lifelong learner. And also, you know, when there's mistakes, as there will be, there will be loss in life, there will be suffering in life, there will be mistakes. There will be what times you don't get your way, you're told no, da, da, da. And um, so it's really taking responsibility for your own life in whatever circumstances you're born with. I, I was born, you know, not privileged. I was born very humble beginnings. 
Uh, my grandmother had uh, just a third grade education. She was forced to drop out of school, raise her family. So my sisters, um, I'm being in the Hispanic culture, you know, we were the first generation to go to college and to really change our lives and our children and their children to come. Um, Emily, when kids ask her, you know, what's it like? Because she's as she she's been on a, a Broadway Sound of Music tour, ninety three cities, different states, countries. At, at before this age, before thirteen, Emily, you were how old when you did that? Like a couple years ago. Um, I was ten, but I turned eleven on the tour. Yeah. So imagine, yeah, like you said, Lawrence, who who does this at that age, right? Um, she has an amazing mom. Um, I'm also a, a, a lifelong uh, cheerleader of Emily now, always championing her successes and the things that she does. It comes with hard work. Kids have asked her, what's it like to be famous? or what's And, and you say, what, what do you say to them, Emily, when they, they tell you that? Well, when they ask me what's it like to be famous, I say I don't really consider myself famous, but something I always have to keep in mind is to be humble and to always remember that just because I'm an actor and I've been in like a couple of films or commercial, it doesn't make me better than anyone else. So just because like you do acting or singing or you perform somewhere, it doesn't make you any better than anyone else. So you should still treat people the same, still continue to be friends with the people you're friends with and just still love everyone and continue to stay humble. I love that. See, she talks about humility and yeah. I wanted her the first time she said that to a whole school like elementary i was blown away i said who taught you to say that and she's like that's what i got that's what yeah. i got from your upbringing so mm -hmm. i it, it's just really pleasant to hear that from from younger generations like emily definitely and i think you know as a person who does a lot of leadership development training and, and lisa you know interacting with so many ceos one of the biggest things how you just explained humility is literally the way that's right we try to help adults figure out like no it's not thinking less of yourself it's just thinking of yourself less and so the work that you do emily like being that person like no i could be a thought leader at 13. that's where i'm right. at in life so i can't yeah. be anything but what i am but i'm not going to minimize anything my abilities or any of that you're allowed to be you with me and so there, the with is the po most powerful part of humility is allowing others to be in the same space with you. So that is absolutely amazing. And so when you think about Lisa, just where this is going with you putting yourself in position to help this younger, this generation next, not, not Z or whatever they're right. trying to label it, this yeah. generation of next, how, how are you seeing just the way you're going to pace yourself for the future? You know, it's, it's, living in purpose and, and living in alignment with what your what your you know skill set is and and you may not know that i mean i turned 50 this year um i have a 30 year old son that's a nurse and he knew he did not want to be an entrepreneur <laughs> he's a nurse you know he's married to a nurse he's actually my puppet Treziki, who emily has been on our mock game show on it's part of the thing i do show very entertaining um i have a son that's almost 16 he's grown up to be a a YouTuber since he was seven, but the thing he wants to do when he grows up is not be a YouTuber. He, you know, he says he wants to go the medical route. We'll, we'll see. I, I support his interest, and that's what we should do, as you know, older adults, as parents, as as mentors, as thought leaders. Um, I enjoy that my work with the work of Unicorn Jazz, that's been described as a movement, is and really inspiring kids, teachers, and other people to to bring happiness, kindness, all the things you talked about early on, uh, is is so important to lead by example. And for me, the give backs I do to the community is working with book donation drives. Uh, we work with the Children's Hospital over Orange County. Emily got on board with that last December with the 12 Days of Christmas song. She was one of 24 kids. Uh, we're working with Erin Community Cultural Center, Los Angeles Food Bank, and then uh, an orphanage out of uh, Vegas called Shade Tree. So how I incorporate kids like Emily or ask you know people listening or, or the public, whether you're an adult or a child or an adult encouraging your children to give is to, to find a cause or something that matches your interest. Yeah, and I, and I, and I know in that, that cause and, and you're trying to find self, right? And, and we, we understand the, you know, the work-life balance and all the rest of these things. Yeah. Um, I want Lisa, you and Emily, how do you balance it all? 
how do you balance what's important or priorities, all the rest of that stuff? Yeah, I'll answer first and then Emily, you chime in. We'd always love your younger input. Um, so for the work-life balance, I came up with the philosophy that's in my chapter 13 that talks about my story and skip a step. So when people ask me about balance, um, it's it's a constant. It's week to week, day by day. I don't think there's no manual about how to get it right as a parent, as, as an adult. You learn from others. Um, so I came up with the philosophy called the five hats, which five areas of life to have balance and meaning. So it's family, friendship, connection, career, and adventure. And I always, you know, pose to people, what is yours and what is mine? And it doesn't mean they have to be at anything. It's whatever is true for you is true for you. But for me, what I've learned from working with CEOs that aren't happy, but yet could have incredible wealth or people wanting to always thinking they want more and not having that fulfillment, um, including, you know, different stages of my life. I really looked at that. And if you're a workaholic, as almost every entrepreneur will be, if you're working too much, how are you spending time with your family and friends or your connection, your partner? Are you having fun along the way? Because we have to play. That's what children do. That's why they have fun and they stay creative. So that, that's my answer. Emily, what would you say? How do you find balance with what you do? Yeah, so I'm currently on summer break, but when I was in school, um, I always put, uh, my mom always said that school comes first. So I always have to make sure my work is done at school. And if I ever, uh, like my mom always said, if you ever fall behind in school or like you're having trouble with school, then you're going to have to take a pause on acting or singing. You're going to have to take a break. And so what I do is, Every single day when I'm in school, I do my school, I do my homework, I do all my work, and then I get to practicing or acting or everything else. Because, uh, I mean, education is important, and I'm going to eighth grade, so I still have a lot of more years ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, so someone like Emily, if you're in, in school or college, mm -hmm. um, you're, you know, you're working on your career hat that's towards your career. Exactly. And so sometimes they're like fuel meters, you're going to work more in them. And, and um, you know, me being, I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years now, and I've worked with many, many entrepreneurs. I mean, and really observing what worked, what didn't, and really realizing that, that other air had suffered, that's being out of balance. So it's a constant, as you'll see, Emily, it's, it's a constant check-in with yourself. It's a check-in if, if your environment, your family, the people are aware of this. And, and, you know, if you're burned out in a certain area, you, you just look at that and you figure out how to adjust it. And, and the pandemic taught us about isolation. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Emily. Yeah, and also um, this past year, uh, I did school fully online because we had to stay inside. And so um, it actually worked out a lot better for me because I would have more breaks than I would if I would be in real in-person school. And so what I would do is I would hop on a class and then they would end early or uh, I would have a break. So I would do a class and then I would have maybe like a five, 10 minute break to just, I guess, regroup and take a minute. And then I would hop on with Lisa and we would read books for the World Book Tour. So that was a lot of fun. And then after that, I would hop back on class when the next class was starting. I absolutely love that. The fact that you, you at your age are figuring out what we as adults are trying to figure out work-life balance. And I love Lisa that you <laughs> wrote about it, but it's really a series of priorities. And I'm glad that you're learning those lessons, right? That's really what it is. It's like, what am I making more important than the other thing? And then I'm choosing to do that thing first. And so when you just think about it as a series of processes and impact and different things like that, I'm so glad that you're deploying these things at this age, because by the time you hit you hit our age, you can be like out of a skyrocket, you got jet fuel uh, in your backpack. So I, I love it. And, and Lisa, one of the things that you, you shared Shared with me when we first met up, you your choice of words here was happiness is a choice. Yes, I, explain happiness to is a choice yeah. and suffering is a choice. I I mean I I looked at that when I've gone through that and and in life is you know I refuse to be let down. I, I you know let some a circumstance keep me down. I refuse to you know be depressed about something if something didn't go my way. And boy, will things not go your way in life? And you know. Um, it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Something that you don't want happens, but 
for me, it's been like, okay, well, where's my relationship with my family, which for me is my sisters, my friends, you know, did I, and I, for me, when life is great as it is right now, and there's a lot of happiness and so many great things were, are happening for Unicorn Jazz, the, the brand and the community with Emily, I just say things are great. I want to make sure all my hats are in check per se, that I have called my mother weekly, that my sisters know I love them, that, you know, my family has their needs met and check, check, check. So it's it's a constant. And it, again, it doesn't mean it's always perfect in that regard. It's 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 part of our daily process. No, nah, and, and, and you're right. It is. It's and happiness is one of those things. Right. Like you said, the last 18 months have nobody could have predicted it. And nobody could predict how we would react and respond to a global pandemic or social unrest or all the different things like that. But you do wake up with that choice. You, you wake up with how you're going to show up. Um, and again, focusing, keeping the main thing, the main thing and why you started in the first place. I really believe as I work with coaching clients, that's really, hey, how do we shift that mindset? Where's the reframe and opportunity to shape your environment from a mental standpoint? And so when you think about and, and everything I've heard you talk about today, you and Emily, there's a sense of there's a power in the way you give. It, h- help me understand. That a little yes. Bit that. Yes. Well, Emily, share from your point of view what it's been like. Um, I'm so grateful that she has supported the gives of Unicorn Jazz and she has her own. I mean, I'm proud for her when she gets an acting role or thing and something else, because I'm like, I know her. I know her really well. And that's the thing she loves to do. What's it been like for you to have learned about the Children's Hospital Orange County um give back we did even till now, which she's really our spokesperson for the other give backs. Well, yes. So, I mean, I love giving back because, I mean, when you give back, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you did the right thing. And you made kids, you made a lot of kids happy or not even people, not even just kids. You made a lot of people happy that you're giving back. And um, I feel like when I share, when I, I can help and I can share my talent and I can do what I love, and make videos and making videos just helps other people. I mean, it feel, it's a good feeling. And also something Lisa does, which I find is really unique and I really love is instead of just donating money, we donate, uh, Lisa got the idea to donate books. And I really love that because then like for the children at the hospital or just children around the world, we can donate books. And I mean, a lot of times books, even certain books, small books, big books, they can have, uh, impacts on certain people and just change their life completely, I guess, and just change their perspective. So I really love the fact that we give back books rather than money um, so the kids can enjoy it too. Yeah, and we did that is to be, um, I have children's author friends that donate books, a kid see Emily donating books, and one of her videos she says is, I'm using my allowance to donate to you know this organization. And um, that, you know, kids get the whole book. They don't get one eighth of the book and, and hats off. I know there's always money contributions needed for all kinds of amazing organizations. It was easy for us to do books. Obviously, I always donate the books. Um, it's able to incorporate story time and song for the younger generation. And every educator, teacher, parent wants us to promote the joy of reading and writing literacy. I wouldn't be who I am today without amazing books of great authors out there. I know, Emily, you've been inspired by lots of great work. And when you read, when Emily, you know, does a, a casting call or audition and she has a script, well, guess what? It's happening. Those are words on a paper that somebody wrote. That's the power of writing. Man, you, golly, Lisa. And again, my, I, I shouted out my wife, who's an amazing ed, educator, particularly, you know, uh, in special education and just, how much like you don't know what someone needs access to you in the in the ripples if they do get it or they don't and so just giving people access to reading materials that they don't have to worry about going into their wallet or their purse about um but donating it giving people access that increasing understanding and competency and all those things um again setting the tone now as a child so many ripples, so many effects that happen when it, that foundation is established from a knowledge and competence standpoint. So I would say shout out to both of you all for, for leaning into those types of things and, and giving back to your communities. And so as, as a kind of a last question, I would ask you both, um, where do we go from here? 
Yes, if you'd like to be involved, learn more about all the great work we're doing for children, the next generation, or if you're an adult that has the time to, to help, we take it. You can go to unicornjazz.com. You can see the books. You can, if you type Unicorn Jazz and Emily Isabel, she's featured all over our social media. She, um, uh, her, her, she's changed my life. And, and again, this is someone that I didn't know I, I would find during the pandemic and then develop that relationship with. So you can go to unicornjazz.com, our Instagram, our YouTube, our LinkedIn. I'm Lisa Caprelli. Very easy to find her as well. I think she's almost tagged on weekly on our posts. And she, it's fun to follow someone like her. Again, I'm not a musician like she is. I love music. I love to see the children who have this incredible talent growing up year after year. Because, again, she's only just turned 13. And when she started as a young child, which her mom showed me these videos, of her as a little kid, kid auditioning going, oh, how did she do that? You know, and it's fun to follow people doing the things they love and then coming together as a team to grow. What would you say, Emily, what your last words? Um, yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. Um, I can't wait to see where we go with Unicorn Jazz. I know Lisa has a lot of fun stuff planned where going to keep on donating, keep on doing good, and keep on giving back to everyone. I love it. And I thank you both for being here today and just sharing a little snippet, uh, the tip of the iceberg about your information, where people could find you, how they can connect with you, uh, because I'm sure you can gain some more fans, followers, um, making sure they they check in on your journey. So I just want to say I'm so appreciative to you both uh, for being here with me today. Thanks for having us, Lawrence. All right. So y'all, yeah, this was another hot takes. Thank you all for being present. Thank you all for engaging. Uh, and until next time, continue to be humble, open and transparent, be kind and be well. Mm -hmm.